One of the best wideouts in the NFL has been overlooked and underrated for his entire life. So I figured it's time to tell you about my man Cooper Cup story. Reverse, triple reverse, here, stop, throw, this side, and it's Cooper Cup and the five, touchdown! Crazy enough, Cooper was not the original name that his parents chose until father Craig Cup had to change a heart and so he decided to change his baby's name from Cody to Cooper. While filling out the paperwork for the kid, Craig asked his wife what she thought about Cooper. As Craig would say, he wanted a name that would sound cool over the loudspeaker, and Cooper Cup had a better ring to it than Cody. Not only did the name just sound cool, but Craig's father Jake was a blocker for Archie Manning in New Orleans, whose firstborn's name was, as you could guess, Cooper. The name stuck with the young stud, and at Davis High School, it was said time and time again on the loudspeakers, as my man was a two-sport athlete in both basketball and football. As a two-way All-State selection, Cooper did not only play wide receiver, but also cornerback, and in fact was a better defensive player at the time, with 4A All-State honors at the position. Not only was Cooper just All-State, but he was a quote-unquote white-chip selection as a top 100 prospect in the state of Washington. All this to say, Cooper was a stud, and as a senior put up some solid stats with over 1,000 receiving yards, 18 touchdowns through the air, and 4 elsewhere as he was able to set a school record. Throughout his time at Davis High, Cooper put up exactly 110 catches for 2,100 yards, but was still able to do his thing on the basketball court as a three-year letter winner. Even with the decent bit of success behind him, Cooper was overlooked at a high school with only Iowa State and Eastern Washington interested. Although a tough choice, the fact that Eastern Washington was in the same state and his former high school head coach was now a part of the team made the decision very easy. Although Eastern Washington is not some juggernaut of a school, Cooper was still overlooked when he got there. He was skilled, but undersized, and so people just looked by him. But my man didn't let anything stop him, and even though he redshirted his freshman season, he was still able to show out as Eastern's Offensive Scout Player of the Year. Going into the following season, Cooper was named a starter at wide receiver and looked like a veteran from the beginning. My man finished the year having set record after record with nearly 1,700 yards, 21 touchdowns, and a pretty insane 14 straight games with a touchdown. Not just great stats, but good enough to earn Cooper the conference's first ever Freshman of the Year award, and the Jerry Rice Award for being the best freshman player in the entire FCS. Not only that, but Cooper was a consensus first team All-American after being honored by numerous selectors at the FCS level. And not even just that, as he once again made history by being the first freshman wideout to be named first team All-American since good old Randy Moss. Not too shabby of company for the young stud, but it set some high expectations for Cooper going into his second year. Although a lot to live up to, Cooper was still able to do his thing once again with over 1,400 yards and 16 touchdowns as he once again was a first team All-American. Not only did Cooper kill it in the receiving game, but he was also a solid kick returner and even was able to earn all Big Sky Conference honors as a returner. After what I would consider a great sequel to his ridiculous freshman campaign, Cooper was a top 20 player in the Walter Payton Award race as one of the best players in the entire FCS. With two straight All-American seasons behind him, Cooper was just on a roll that carried into his junior year as he went off once again with over 1,600 yards and 19 touchdowns along with a Big Sky record 114 catches. For the third straight year, he was a first team All-Big Sky Conference wide receiver and upon that the offensive MVP for the league. After coming up short the previous season, Cooper was able to win the Walter Payton Award as a junior and proved once again that he just had a unique level of talent. With only one year left to show just how much he could bring to the table, Cooper was looking to go off as a senior. After such a stellar year as a junior, many thought that he would declare for the NFL draft, but instead Cooper decided to give it one last hurrah as a senior. Although it was a tall task to top a season as the best player in the FCS, Cooper went off with his most yards at Eastern Washington in all four seasons, with exactly 1,700 yards and 17 touchdowns, which led to him having a record-breaking 428 receptions for 6,464 yards and 73 touchdowns in his four seasons with the team. By record-breaking, I don't just mean school record, but FCS and college football breaking numbers as he put together one of the greatest careers in college football history, and so now it only makes sense that he would be ready for the next level. After putting together such a great career with Eastern Washington, Cooper got an invitation to the Senior Bowl and was able to put up two catches for 14 yards. Although pretty underwhelming stats, the experience elevated his draft stock 
and after doing all the combine and pro day stuff, he was a borderline second to third round draft prospect. As arguably a top 10 wideout in the draft, Cooper was seen as much more than simply a FCS stud, and Steve Smith even had him as the best wideout in the entire thing. Cooper went early third round to a Rams team that was in rebuild mode, with the second year quarterback in Jared Goff, a rising star at running back in Todd Gurley, and a wide receiver core with talent like Robert Woods and Sammy Watkins. Competing with studs like that day in and day out forced Cooper to be at his best, but he was no stranger to that as he had an insane work ethic that earned him the fourth spot following Kenny Britt's departure. Since he was only behind Sammy Watkins, Robert Woods, and Tavon Austin, Cooper was given the shot to prove himself early on and he even had over 70 yards and a touchdown in his very first start. You would think it would be hard to follow up such a strong beginning. But week after week, Cooper kept on putting up solid performances after solid performance, and by December he was already starting full time. Not only did Cooper have an okay rookie year, but his nearly 900 yards and 5 touchdowns were team leading. This is impressive enough on any team as a rookie, but on an 11-5 playoff squad, it is unique. And although the team lost in the wildcard against Atlanta, Cooper had proven enough by that point to be considered a star in the making. After his excellent rookie performance, Cooper was named to the all-rookie team by PFWA, and now is looking to take his game to the next level the following year. After gaining the starting spot as a rookie, Cooper got some company in the form of an absolute stud in Brandon Cooks, who along with Cooper and Robert Woods formed a three-headed beast in the Rams receiving corps. The three went to work early on, and Cooper was nearly unstoppable with over 400 yards and five touchdowns in his first five games. Things were going great for this stud until a knee injury against Denver took him out the following two games. Not too bad of a break for my man, but it wasn't the only roadblock for him that season, as he tore his ACL a game and a half later. Although he only played in realistically around 6.5 games, Cooper was still able to put up nearly 600 yards and 6 touchdowns in a rough year to say the least. People forget that this season was when the Rams made their Super Bowl run, and so maybe if they had a certain Cooper Cup, things may have gone different, but I guess you never know. Anyways, throughout the offseason, Cooper was on the road back to the football field, and thankfully after months and months of rehab, he was able to play in the season opener. Now that he was back in business, Cooper was able to put together his best season to date with nearly 1,200 yards and 10 touchdowns as he began to get on the radar of the football world as many now saw him as one of the best wideouts in the NFC. After establishing himself as a legitimate talent the previous year, Cooper went into 2020 looking to embrace what got him here in the first place as he changed his number to what he wore in college as he was number 10 once again. Not only could Cooper have changed numbers, but he also had the chance to change teams as a free agent. And although he could have gone elsewhere, my man decided to re-sign with the team and wreck some havoc in LA. Well, Cooper was once again able to do his thing that year, and even though he had nearly 200 less yards, he was still able to put up almost 1000 yards, stats good enough to show that he still had the sauce. Now that Cooper had 4 solid years under the belt, his next job was to just keep trying to push up his game to the next level time and time again. Although tough to do when you are already performing so well, a certain move by the Rams over the past offseason seems to have helped Cooper quite a bit. The Rams sent Goff to Detroit and got back good old Matt Stafford, and so far it's looking like a pretty dang good move. Not only are the Rams 3-0, as of me making the video, but Cooper's looking about as good as he ever has. Through 3 games, he has over 350 yards and 5 touchdowns, which is crazy enough 2 more than he had all of last year, but only the beginning of what is shaping up to be a great year for the team. Quite literally, the Rams look like one of the best teams in football after taking out the Bucks. A big reason as to why the team is so successful is the combo of Stafford and Cooper being nearly unstoppable week after week. If Cooper is able to keep this production for the rest of the year, he would have a record breaking 2000 yards and 28 touchdowns. Now I know that this kind of production is extremely difficult to maintain and highly unlikely, but I think it's a testament to just how good my man is doing so far this year. What do you guys think of Cooper? Comment down below your thoughts and what you think him and the Rams are going to do in 2021. Anyways, Cooper Cup is just one of those studs that people forget about, but he will always do his thing time and time again. He escapes the safety, delivers a strike to Cup across the 20. He's across the 40. Cup into the clear. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed, it would be amazing if you guys could subscribe, like, and comment down below stuff you want next. But anyways, see you guys soon and peace out.